Well, I like this article for many reasons. This article, memory networks in uh, ICLR 2015. Uh, that is a very important article. And there are similar ideas, but m many of them are based on this uh, 2015 article. What is the problem of recurrent neural networks? Recurrent neural networks are known to have difficulty in performing memorization. So they have uh, uh, internal memory and, for example, LSTM, long short-term memory. But, but it's just internal memory. It cannot memorize very long, sen very long sentences or so. The situation is similar to for other tasks. In the vision and audio domains, a long-term memory is required to watch a movie and answer questions about it. So we cannot uh, just memorize it with simple RNNs. But the idea for memory networks is very interesting. Memory networks reason with inference components combined with long-term memory components. They learn how to use these jointly. The long-term memory can be read and written to with the goal of using it for prediction. We investigate these models in the context of question answering, where the long-term memory effectively acts as a dynamic knowledge base. And the output is a textual response. They show the reasoning power of such models by chaining multiple supporting sentences to answer questions that require understanding the intention of the verbs. A memory network consists of memory, for example, memory M1, M2, M3, many different sentences. For example, Alex came. Bob went to the office, someone left the milk. So these are the sentences that are stored in different memories. Your input is your query. So this is the question that you ask, you ask for example, where is, the mis where is the milk now? This is the question. But the generalization is very important. We call this generalization as there is an opportunity for a network to compress and generalize its memories at this stage for some intended future use. So it just updates old memories given the new input. And uh, they have separated output from response because in the output they just want to create some features. Just uh, given the new input and the current memory state, it produces a new output. But the response converts the output into the response format. So we have an X, we have a question, we want to convert it to our input. But we update memories given the new input. And uh, then we compute features output. And finally, we want our answer. Our answer is could, uh, could be a sentence. But in this lecture, in this paper, they just uh, assume that the answer is just one word. For example, office. Instead of saying the milk is in office, we say office. So we say what is the probability of office, kitchen, and so on. Uh, so for the G component, they can use just a uh, slot in memory and If the memory is huge, like the free base, knowledge base, or Wikipedia, one needs to organize the memories. This can be achieved with a slot choosing function H that I described here. It's a function selecting the slot. 
which slot should be selected. Uh, and this can be achieved with slot choosing function so that, for example, it could be designed or trained to store memories by entity or topic. The output component is typically responsible for reading from memory and performing inference, calculating what are the relevant memories, because we have, for example, 100 memories, but the output says just uh, number 3 and number 75. These are the memories that are relevant to the query, the question that I'm as asking. So we combine these information and it gives you the response. So from 1,000 memories that we have, we select, we select here just two or three memories, for example, memory number four, memory number 756, memory number, for example, 78. And we say this question is relevant to just these memories, these sentences. And by combining them, we can get our response. So we want to know, for example, which memories are important. For example, when k is two, we just want we just want to find k k memories that are relevant. And we have a scoring function. For example, what is the score? What is the uh, chance that memory number one is important for, or memory number two is important? But there is an important note that we then find a second supporting memory given the first found. So it's just um, incremental. It, it is augmenting. For example, because we have found that memory number one, O1 is important, O1 could be anything, uh, then we augment it. Again, we can augment it. Because memory number one, number two are important, now this is the probability that memory number three is important. It is relevant to the query that we are asking. And as I said, from, for example, 1,000 memories, we just pick uh, one and two. We just pick two memories and we combine it with our query so these are memories, we have two memories that we have selected out of, for example, 1,000 memories, and we combine these memories and the queries to form this answer, response. And as I said, the answer is milk, for example. It's just one word. So one word over many words in your vocabulary. What is the probability of each of them? And we get, for example, W is equal to milk or office. Where is the location? Anything. It's just one word. And this is the, uh, so this is the scoring, but how do you combine memories with your uh, query? This is how you combine them. You combine it with this function. So, for example, we say Joe went to the kitchen, Fred went to kitchen, Joe picked up the milk, and where is milk now at the office? So we pick the memories that are relevant and answer that. And training is very obvious. Uh, they minimize the model. using a fully supervised setting. And you can also do segment segmenting because you don't know, for example, you have a query, you don't know when the next sentence starts and then when the second memory starts. So there is a way to do segmentation. And there is a, an interesting thing about hashing but we, we should write the model because it's not just uh, facts, what is the capital of France that doesn't need, a, a, that is not like a story, it's just a fact. You don't need oh, 
which sentence comes first and what is the second one. There is no temporal meaning or there is no uh, time. But when, it, when we, are, we are talking about the story and we need to know, for example, Bob went to the kitchen, it, uh, then went to the office, then left the milk there. So where is the milk? So there is a story behind that. So we, sh- we need to know which one, the right time is important, which one should be written first. So, for example, if this one is greater than zero, it means the sentence Y has priority over Y prime. And for the negative side is the opposite. And we can also model previously unseen words. And exact matches and unseen words. So this is a sample test set predictions that in red, it means these are the answers that we predict. Uh, living room, I believe, the bathroom, sometimes just a word, sometimes the answer is a sentence, the milk is in the kitchen. But the important thing it, it is that it picks, it selects some memories out of many memories, out of 1000 memories, it selects just five memories. Because using this in your prefrontal cortex of your brain, if this is a brain, it, the prefrontal cortex, it, it combines the information, it is higher order cognitive processes. So it needs to combine just relevant information. And this is actually done in the brain. The brain selects those memories that are relevant to the query that, or, or to the input that you are uh, getting. For example, the visual cortex is about vision, is in the back of your mind, the back of your head, this side. And it gets the input, that is the query. For example, is seeing everything, observing everything. For example, what is, where is that person? So it's a, uh, it comes here and then uh, the, it becomes a query and from the query you should uh, find the relevant memories for example you should know that person you should know what person usually uh, that to to what person to to which person to whom uh, does it uh, talk to for example and uh, this is another example Bilbo traveled to the cave. Gollum dropped the ring there. Bilbo took the ring. And where is the ring? So it picks uh, the relevant memories and then combining with that, with the query, it gives the response. Or in a dialogue, Fred went to the kitchen. Where is the milk now? Where does milk come from? Milk come from cow. Or what is a cow? Uh, what is a cow? The type of cow be female of cattle. So we add three right time features to model and score this triple. As I said, there is a priority. We want to know if Y is, um, has priority over Y prime. The model prefers y over y prime if this is greater than zero. I think I've given the motivation for you to study this interesting paper.